Okay, we want to use this given graph. This is the graph of y equal f of x. We want to use this to answer the following questions. So the first one asks us to find f of negative 2. What this is really saying is it's asking you to, to indicate what y value, where is the y value when x is negative 2. So again, what this means is the definition is f of x equals y. So it's really saying if you've got an x inside, what y value do you get when x is negative 2. So to do that, you're going to look at this graph and you go to the negative 2 point and it says that at, at negative 2 you're at positive 1, which means the answer for this is going to be 1. Next, we want to find x such that f of x equals 3 and we're also going to do f of x equals 0. Now this one's asking the reverse. Because this number after the equal sign is given, that's the y value that's given. So therefore, you want to find the x value that gives you a y value of 3. So if we look at the graph, we want to find where, where I have an x value of 5, or a y value of 3 rather. So the y value of 3 is right here. That corresponds to an x value of 5. So what you would say here is my x value is going to be equal to 5. When x is 5, I get a y value of 3. Now I'm looking for f of x equals 0. I want to find the x value that gives me a y value of 0. Okay, so I want to look any place on here where I have a y value of 0, I'm going to see what the corresponding x values are. There's three places where this occurs at 0, 4, and 6. So I'm going to write 0, 4, and 6. And right there, those are going to be my x values that give me a y value of 0. Next, is f of 3 positive or negative? Remember what this is saying? It's asking us for what is the y value when x is equal to 3. So I'm going to go to 3 on the graph, and I'm going to see whether the, the, the graph is above or below the x-axis. Now 3, each of these um, right here, this is 4 comma 0 and this is 2. Each of these is, um, each of these marks represents 2 units. So here, between 2 and 4, 3 would be about right here. If I follow this down, that means, draw a line down there, that means it's hitting the graph at this point. And if I follow that over, that means that that's going to have a negative y value because all these here are going to be negative. So therefore, my answer f of 3 is going to be negative. I don't need to indicate the exact number, just whether it's positive or negative. Now for domain, I want to indicate the x values that the graph uses. All the way over here on the left hand side, the farthest left that it goes, that's going to have an x value of negative 4. There's no more part of the graph that's beyond the x value of negative 4. So my domain is going to be from negative 4, that's a bracket because it's a closed in circle, it goes all the way over to here, the x value is going to be 6. So between negative 4 and 6, that's the x values the graph uses. It doesn't use any more beyond this. Between negative 4 and 6, that's my x values the graph uses. Range. Okay, so for range, that's talking about the y values that the graph is using. So the y value, the lowest y value on the graph is negative 2. The highest one that's used is going to be 3. So there's no part of the graph that goes below negative 2, so therefore the range is going to be from negative 2 to 3. 3 is the highest y value. There's no more graph above the 3, so the values are used are only between negative 2 and 3. Okay, now it asks for which values is f of x greater than 0. Okay, it's saying what part of the graph is above the x-axis. That's really what that's saying. Positive y values are above the x-axis. So I have this section of the graph right here, and I have this section of the graph that's being used. So I want to indicate the x values for which that's occurring. So let's do this part first. Right here, there's a section of the graph that's above the x-axis between 4 and 6. I know 4 and 6 will be one of my answers. Now the reason why I'm putting parentheses on here is because I have a greater than but not equal to symbol. So greater than uh, means that I'm not able to include 0. So if any of my intervals, uh, my, the ones that I'm indicating on here off the graph, if any of those touch the y-axis, I'm not allowed to include those. They must have parentheses. So I have another section. Uh, so I'm going to put a union here. The other section is this one here. 
So between the x value of negative 4 and 0, that's another spot where the graph is above the x-axis. Again, I'm only indicating x values here. So between the x value of 4 and 6, it's above the x-axis. Between the x value of negative 4 and 0, it's above. Now 0, it, again, this hits the x-axis. Anywhere it hits the x-axis, that must have a parenthesis. But negative 4, we can use a bracket there because in this case, we're okay to include negative 4 because negative 4 does not have a y value of 0. That has a y value of 2, and 2 is already greater than 0. So it's okay to actually include negative 4 there that will have a bracket. The last one, how many times does a line y equal negative 1 half intersect f? Okay, y equals 1 half would be a horizontal line that would look that would go through right about here. Okay, so one, the middle part would be 1, so right there would be a dotted line going through. That's going to hit the graph 1, 2, 3 times. So the answer there is going to be 3. There's no special notation you need for that. We just want to know how many times would that line cross over f of x. In this case, it's going to be 3.